no doubt that adding stress to a situation, yeah, it's going to affect the food, it's going to affect the, the timing, the service, everything. The customers sense it. They don't know why, but they sense it. They know. The customers know. To a really hard career you're not going to make any money for a long time if ever you know you're standing on your feet average 14 hours a day when you get out of school you're gonna have two or three jobs to pay your student loans I've done a 22 hour shift in a kitchen you know you're missing birthdays you're missing holidays uh, vacations all those kinds of things and it can add up half the people I graduated with have already quit working in restaurants and gone to the sales side or some other part of it. If you're not passionate about it, don't do it. Because it's very hard, demanding physical and mental work. If you don't want to live, eat, and breathe the chef life every day, don't do it. Don't be a chef. Because I this, this consumes my life, but I love it. I mean, it's, it's an adrenaline rush. It's like people who love to go skydiving, when they jump out of that plane, they get that feeling. It's, it's thrilling. I, I really like it. going into the kitchen when I was little my grandma would put me on her table and we just cook all day my grandma cooked a lot and she was a really great cook I think that's the greatest memory I have it was what we did together as like a family so I always knew that I wanted to become a chef I told my parents since I was three years old and this is what I wanted to do and they and they pushed me along and helped me achieve that goal when I was 15, growing up, my father told me to get a job in a restaurant because I ate too much. So when I was a kid, actually my grandfather, um, my dad's dad, he always loves to just go to the store and grab whatever and then come back home and just cook it. He would just be like, here, try this, here, try this. And ever since then, that's what sparked my interest and sparked the fire inside of me for it. Usually in my country, the woman's cook. My father was completely opposite. My mom doesn't cook anything. She said that she can burn the water, so imagine that. Uh, <laughs> Big thing about teamwork like on any team is trust each other to do the job and make sure you do the job. And as a veteran of myself, I can tell you without a doubt that work in a kitchen is all about teamwork. You know, you may be assigned a station of work, but if you're on the line and, and that station gets hit hard, you, know, you all pitch in to make it happen. A little while ago, David had a couple extra minutes, so he let everybody know, jumped in on cutting the peppers. I was just standing there waiting for something, he just jumped, jumped in the next thing doing. You know, one team, one dream. And if there is one oddball out, it really hacks and deteriorates a team. Uh, you, it's absolutely essential to have teamwork. If you don't, you can set yourself up for failure. You know, at the end of the day, it's about the food. 
It's not about anything else. You take care of each other, take care of the food, take care of the customer. Getting everything ready to go. Yeah, just cooking beef, cooking vegetables, just prepping the salads for tomorrow. Desserts are ready. Had a good time. The saying is, if, if one of us goes down, we all go down. A lot of friends drop out because of the stress level. You have to be able to cope with it, and if you can't, you shouldn't be there. It's really that simple. There's a constant deadline, and it's constantly changing. It's just a huge mental strain because you've got seven different things coming at you all at once. You know, you have to, everything's now. I think you put out a worse product with a hectic and stressed kitchen for sure. Because when you have cooks that are angry and nobody wants to be there, nobody wants to deal with it, and their work reflects that. If you're stressed out and you get angry and you get upset, that's gonna that's gonna carry over. And you notice people starting to drop things or slam things or be in a hurry or rushing. You know, you might start yelling at your servers. I cuss a lot. I love to cuss. Things get tense. Sometimes I go into the walk-in and scream a little bit. Walk-ins are magical places. <laughs> it takes one person, one person to get upset and get stressed out, and it affects everybody around them. If it goes on too long and unchecked, it promotes apathy. And when you have employees and cooks that don't care, it absolutely affects the guests because they get a subpar product for sure. And the last thing you want to do is the people that you've devoted your life to serving are getting food that you wouldn't be happy to eat. I mean, it doesn't have to be that stressful. You know, they've got some pieces of equipment over there, obviously, that we don't have. Uh, they've got a cook chill. Uh, you can cook things and put put it right in there and it just chills it down real quick. Over here, we have to put it in a water bath. It was just when it came down to time, we don't have that cook chill equipment. And then having equipment that can do multiple things for you versus one thing at a time, running to get a sheet pan, running to the oven, taking it out, putting it on a speed rack, rolling it into a freezer, or into a walk-in, rolling it back out, warming it back up again, and so many steps. And in that doing, if we could have equipment that also multitasks, our efficiency level will increase dramatically and we can get even more stuff done. You know what it is? They mixed it up with uh, olive oil and a little bit of lemon juice. They're not hot. How do we keep them warm? That's this is too much. Well, visually, the seared ones look oh, yeah. better, right? Yeah. Oh, this is very easy. I don't have to stand over a hot grill, burning my hands, burning my hairs. It's pretty self-explanatory, so you know, if, you can, if you can run a touchscreen computer, you can run this thing. Bam, bam. Just like that. Done deal. Blue is my favorite. A little bit more flavor. Though. Mine was a little bit more tender. The red, it wasn't as done, so it was really, really good. I liked the blue better because I thought it was chilled a little bit better. And the other one kind of fell apart. Well, normally I don't get to see the customer themselves. And uh, the teams are making their way out of the kitchen now. But it's very satisfying to hear back. It really makes it feel like it's worth it and like I'm doing a good job, so. At the end of the day, it's about the customer. It's about the money. So if you can have something that is multifunctional, like you have to be, I think that's a win-win. Having the right tools is definitely something that most kitchens would, it would improve them. 
items like the, the blast chiller that we have inside are making my life 500 times easier. It helps you, you know, work the food in a timely manner so that you don't get behind, you don't get stressed. And it shows in your food. People's faces always light up when you put food in front of them. That's probably the best thing. That is what it's all about. And if you're not in it for that, if you're in it for the money or the fame or what have you, you don't need to be a chef. That's how I feel. <laughs>